Hello everyone, welcome to From the Heart. I'm Joshua. And I'm Mary. And we're excited to bring to you all that's new and good when it comes to the arts in Central Florida. Today we're talking with Gene Columbus. He's the executive director of Orlando Repertory Theater. And now we're going to learn a little bit of Gene's vision of the future for Orlando, the Orlando Rep, and for you. Hi. Well, it's so nice to be here. Thank you for having We're me. We're so glad to have you, Gene. So the Orlando Rep has an incredible heritage, a great past, but what do you see for the future for the Orlando Rep? Well, I think when you connect the dots and you see that, uh, that the, the, the Civic Theater Central Florida was built by volunteers uh, certainly 40 years ago, and it has a wonderful heritage, and that program that they started with, with children's programming has, has continued to grow. And then in, in 2000, the, uh, it became the Orlando Repertory Theater. Uh, and, we, and we connect the dots and we look to the future. And I believe it's more of the same, the uh, trying to make sure that as many children get an opportunity to participate in this. And we have a very, very active program in ensuring that Title I schools uh, get to come in. And United Arts of Central Florida is very, very instrumental in helping throughout our community to bring kids to, uh, to experience art and, and art, arts and culture. And so uh, that needs to be, because it's, it's the fabric that, that, that makes our community strong, mm -hmm. it makes our citizens better, because they have, uh, they have something that, that values the human spirit. Mm. And uh, we need to continue to focus and, and uh, work with, yes, yes. Well, yes. we know that your theater and your leadership has had such great impact in this community, but just tell us a story that, that, that our audience can hear about a story of impact. Uh, uh, there's a wonderful story about a play we did at the height of the recession. Mm. And, and during the recession, headlines were about, uh, about, about depression. And so uh, we have an amazing artistic director, uh, Jeff Revels, and Jeff selected a play called A Hundred Dresses. And this play is about a little girl during the Depression that wears the same tattered blue dress to school every day. But at school, she's taunted by the girl that has the pretty dresses with, the, with all the ribbons. This little girl in her tattered dress brings bread for, for lunch. And so, why do you always bring bread? And well, well, I like bread. And then when another student offers her an apple, oh, she only likes bread. Mm. Mean, mean. And we have that moment in the play in which the bully, why can't you have an easy name to say like Smith or Jones? And, and why do you wear that same ugly dress to school? Well, the little girl, just out of desperation, I have a hundred dresses just as pretty as yours at home. How could you possibly have a hundred dresses in that shack you call a home? Mean, mean. When you looked in the audience, you saw there were tears there just as well as on stage. Mm and also you're like that because sometimes kids do not know how how mean they can be well uh, at the end of the play th there is the the bully does find redemption but she also finds that there were a hundred dresses and in the theater we brought up the lights and all around the top of the theater <laughs> are these beautiful dresses that she had drawn. Mm. Well, we were, we were uh, uh, doing the show and the, and the students from Riverdale Elementary, because we sent out the study guides and they got to read the, the book in advance, they decided they're going to do a dress drive and they were going to get a hundred dresses to take to Grant Avenue Elementary. Yeah. So, so the kids did this dress oh. drive and I really got on, got a lot of energy, and they collected over 300 mm. dresses. Amazing. Gosh. And these kids from Riverdale went down to Grand Avenue and they set up a boutique. <laughs> and how old are these children? A boutique with, with, with the dresses draped over, the, over the, uh, the, the auditorium seats and balloons with the sizes. And the older elementary school girls took the younger ones shopping 
with that perfect dress and they had donated ribbons and bags and they, the, the girls got their, their beautiful new treasures and, and, and the kids from Riverdale came to the rep to see the show and pride, oh. such pride. Oh. But, but the next day awesome. <laughs> there were still dresses. So they invited the Grand Avenue Elementary School girls to select a second dress. The majority didn't select one for themselves, oh. but for a sister or a cousin. Mm -hmm. The ripple effect, that's what we do in the arts. Mm, that's impact. That's impact. <laughs> that's oh my God. <laughs> you clothed people. <laughs> yeah, oh and that's, that's a story of theater literally changing lives. And that's what the arts do. That's why we're so passionate about it. all of us. Is and because about it, empathy, that the kids wanted to be able to, yes. to help because of this girl and the story. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm like no, so moved it's by true, that. But, and you just proved that through your story, but, but how else do you feel the arts can change community? I mean, how can Central Florida be a better place because of what we do and all of the arts, artists and, and art leaders, how can it be a better place? Uh, I'm gonna use myself as an example. When in 1977, they asked me to come to uh, Central Florida, and I was very, very concerned because back then, uh, there was no classical music. Uh, there was the Florida Symphony Orchestra. There was uh, Southern Ballet Theater. But there wasn't really a lot of art, and I almost did not come because I, I thought I was going to this, this desert. <laughs> now, we have all the, 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 the tourism and all this other industry, and if we want to attract the brightest, most capable people in that industry, we need to have quality of life, and quality of life means we have to have good arts and culture. And it's exciting that we've got the Dr. Phillips Center opening, but, but already existing is we have all these wonderful organizations in our community that are continuing to, 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 to contribute, and, and your organization, which has grown incredibly quickly over just the, the last few years, mm -hmm. so it's, all of these things, I believe, contribute to making this a great place to live, work, and play. Absolutely, and it's building relationships and creating community and all those things uh, that the arts do. And where, you know, we wish we could talk to you for oh hours, Jean, because we totally could. I but do. but you're today being here is a part of making this that better community. Thank mm -hmm. you so, so much. Yeah. Well, I hate that we're you. out of time, but if people want to get in touch with you or Orlando Rep, tell us one more time how they do it. Go to www.orlandorep.com. Thank you, Jean Columbus. And thank you for joining Joshua and I today as, our, as we spoke with Jean Columbus. Could have gone on for hours. Or go say hi to Jean yourself with Orlando Rep. Tell him and his cast that Mary and Joshua say hello from the heart. <laughs>